believe what happened to me. This morning, yeah, I was gallivanting. I was like, whatever. Why don't I just enjoy this snow? <laughs> Why not? You live once. Oh, that was fun. Fuck me. I could be here all day. <laughs> and I got up. And then I realised I lost my phone. And I was like, no way. In a way, because I wanted to change my number, I thought that it was just a sign from God. Like, like maybe this was the time that you meant to lose it. And I thought, no, Junior, don't try and put good things. Because you, you, you was an idiot. You was being a fool, gallivanting in the snow when you should have been on your way home. Ah, stupid boy like me. So there's me. I just literally messaged Kevin. I was like, babe, I lost my phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, um, and all of this, sending one message. And then, straight after that, I go on Instagram. And then I see someone tag my friend. And then they're like, can you form with like sweat that I found his phone this morning? And I was like, oh my God, there's two people like this. And then I was DMing the boy. It was his grandson. He gave it to his granddad. And I'm going now to get it. So, I was like, do you want me to bring anything? Do you want like a little whiskey or... He's like, no, I'm just happy that I found the owner. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe that there's still people like this in the world. Like, seriously, man. And here is me contemplating my life. Like, oh my God, my cards, my this. Because it's so funny. When you lose your phone, you don't know how much is attached to it. So now it's definitely taught me a lesson. Like, I'm so grateful. I cannot actually believe I have this phone back. Like, seriously. Fucking hell, man. And now the sun's shining. This makes me feel like it was a sign. Oh my god, you don't understand. I cannot stop saying thank you. I'm so grateful. It's unreal. I've never ever walked down this part of my road before. It's actually quite cool. It looks, it doesn't look like, well, it's not London, obviously, but it's pretty. Oh my god. I just want to get in and eat now. Oh my god, I feel like I need to go to church on Sunday to say thank you properly. I can't, I just, oh. Let me go now before I drop this phone. God forbid, because this one, I can't imagine getting back. A specific comment by Ladyboy Gunship. And I like what she said because it resonates with how I was feeling about kindness and stuff. You see, when you think about homophobia and homophobic abuse and stuff and people that are like that. Okay. Obviously for me, I don't see a point in being homophobic. And I'm not just saying that just because I happen to be gay. I'm saying it because there's just no point. It's like, I there's a hundred things, a hundred trillion things that I don't like in the world. I'm not going to keep shouting it out and try and... Um, make people feel some type of way if I don't like something then I just don't like it it's, I keep it moving or I don't pay attention to it that's just that like why would it need to bother me to the point where I have to embarrass people and embarrass myself shouting out stupid nonsense in the street like and it doesn't make any especially when you're not trying to hide it I mean if if it's obvious that I'm gay yeah, what are you doing like what are you benefiting shouting it out because if you're trying to cause me shame and i'm not showing you shame then it should look then you should feel really stupid on yourself and then another thing talking about all this stuff i have to talk about the church because there's something that irritated me the other day when people try and use your sexuality and your sexual orientation and they try to justify a religious belief in against going against that grain and that making you feel that what you are is a disgrace and it's wrong and stuff. Because, you know, it's ultimately that shame that a lot of people... That it's because of that that there's a huge percentage of people that wouldn't come out anyway. And that will never come out. And that will keep sleeping with... There's a lot of people that will still say that they're bisexuals to themselves when they know they're gay, but still carry on the facade... Like, you know, they're straight, so they'll still be dealing with women just to impress their family and still have their men on the side. Or Those people fill up Grindr, fill up all those apps. And I'm not even shaming them. And I can understand why, because it, it's a scary thing for them to come out and lose all they know or to be made to feel shamed because they make you being homosexual a disgusting thing. It's a disgrace. You know, God created Adam and Eve. 
And that's what I understand that. Like, because when people talk, God created man and women. God created man and woman, not man and man. That's why man and woman are here to procreate. That's why blah, 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 blah. Well, did you ever think about it like this? Like, okay, we all know that there was Adam and Eve. Well, supposedly there was. We can't say for certain that there was that. Because no one was alive to see that. One. But B, being a Christian... I will believe, yes, that's very true. Okay, I'll agree with you for that. But then you have to remember that there's love. So, did God create love to only be one dimensional from man to woman? And then there's attraction. Did God only say that you're only allowed to be attracted to man and woman? Or did people in their ignorance make that? I want to know who made that concept because if people trying to justify that's how it's meant to be, then that means the love that you have for your kids and the love you have for people should be one dimensional. Yeah, I shouldn't have man friends. I should only have women because, you know, God only created Adam and Eve. So I should only love a, a woman. That's it. That's it. Incomplete. I would never love a man. I would never have no love for a man. So I would never, I don't understand. that. When you put it, if you really want to talk about it like that, it sounds so ridiculous. Yes, there may have been procreation of a man and a woman, and that's that's a, as far as it goes for me. Love doesn't discriminate. Love isn't prejudice. Everyone else chooses to make love like that. You cannot tell me how to love or who I'm attracted to or what attracts me. Do you, you can't you, that you can who can dictate that? That's why we're all individuals. That's why you can have two sets of twins identical and they're still individual. Do you know what I mean? Like, because everyone has, everyone has their own identity. And it's not for you to tell someone how they're meant to love or who they're meant to love. And then have the audacity to put religious beliefs into it. Because now if you're making it that, like, now this is the thing about religious beliefs. Like, because it puts a lot of people off because a lot of people are so biased and ignorant when it comes to religious. Because they, they make it like, you're meant to do this, you're meant to abide by this, you're meant to abide by this. And it's always the people with the loudest mouths that never practice what they preach. Because they're incapable of it. They only know how to but they don't know how to actually divulge in their own information. There's some of the, some, a, a huge potential, a huge percentage of people that claim they're Christians or claim they're Muslim or claim whatever their belief is are not only hypocrites, but they're the, the most evilest, conniving, bitchy, gossiping, people that you could ever meet i feel like i've met the most wicked people in church you know especially when there's a beautiful i'll never forget this time i went to this church right and this is when i stopped going to pentecostal churches i stopped going to black coat to um churches and i just went to like a nice little white Christian one where I lived in Dagnum because it was quiet and I never used to stay for the whole service only rarely that I've stayed for like a service I literally like go in when everyone leaves say my thank yous and then go about my business so one this one time I stayed and everyone was there like all different types of people were there and he was like God loves all of us like his preaching was so beautiful it weren't like it, it was something that made people, everyone feel welcome. It, I didn't feel ostracized. I didn't feel like I was going to be judged before I opened my mouth. I didn't feel like anyone was looking at me precisely, individually saying, it's you, 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 you. I felt like he was really in lifting everyone's spirit. And that should be the beauty of religion. Now, the thing that I like about religion is the fact that it can give you guidance. It can... It can install certain principles in your head. And I just feel like it gives you... It, there's a beautiful belief in a higher power. There's a beautiful belief knowing that there's someone watching over you. There's someone guiding you through life. There's a beautiful belief in knowing that there is more for you. And it creates belief. It creates hope. It, it There's a lot of uh, beautiful things that religion contributes. But then it's people that make it something else that people do not want to be a part of it's people that 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 tarnish it and make it this thing where it's it, you abide by these rules or you're out or you're this or you're this if you do this you're this if you do this you're this and that is not how i have ever seen the word of god and even down to when i used to be forced to go to sunday school i never had that i always 
I didn't appreciate summer school because I just didn't like being around new people. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't like being left from my nan and I didn't like being around strangers. But I appreciated what was happening at the time. I just didn't like it. But I never was made to feel like an individual, funny enough, or made to feel like... I was this or I was this because I've always been a, a flamboyant, outgoing character and no one's ever made me feel like how I am is wrong until I've met my fellow aunties and uncles when they, you know, have to pick up a little something or they have to say a little extra or they have to, nah, 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 and you just can't, you can't, it's like people like putting a label on you before they get to know you and it's dangerous if you haven't even identified yourself as that. That's why I probably had so much of a confusional coming out and that's why it took me probably so long to come out because I never identified what people were calling me, all the abuse I was facing when people were telling me I was gay. I didn't even know what that was. I never identified that. I never saw it. I never even heard of it at that point. So it was really annoying because all I, all I felt, I remember what I felt when I was being called it before I knew what it was. And it was just shame, it was disgust. So that's what I knew. So I was I was going against that, that feeling. And that's why when I just come out, I said that I was bi. Because it was an easier thing that, it was an easier thing to accept, to give hope to four people. It's like once they know that you're still interested in women and it's okay, you're, 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 you're just experimenting, it's just sank in your head. And then I started living and then we're here. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> but it's just annoying. Like, if people don't understand that the one thing that can change our whole heap in this world, especially when it comes to homosexuality, is if it's just the people that are actually homophobic. If they was just to cool off. I don't care about what you think or what you think is right or what you think is wrong. But if something's not bothering you and it's, and it, 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 I don't understand love is love. It's a beautiful thing. And if you find love, if that type of love bothers you, the fact that you're seeing a man and man and a woman and woman, it's just like to me, someone being homophobic to me is no different to how black people view white people in slavery or no let me not say it like that is is how you would feel when you hear that uh, when you hear uh, the kkk or you hear or when indians hear them when it when pakistanis don't like being called a paki and they find that as a racist slur how everyone feels about stuff that goes against them is exactly how i feel what goes against me and i don't say paki I mean, I'm saying it now, but I would never, I'm not saying it in a derogatory, in a racial slur. I'm saying it because I'm explaining something and I have to express the full thing while I'm explaining it. Otherwise, it just, it's not going to have no meaning. It's not going to hit you when I'm talking. So, yes, I have to say it because as horrible as it sounds, it's a horrible word. Like, I always thought, oh my God, I would hate if someone was to call me an Afric. Because I never understood that. It's not even a racial bit. It is. It is racial because it's the, It's not necessarily... Because it is a short term for Pakistani. But you're using it in a racial... In a racially... Um, in a racially... In a racial... In a racial way. So therefore it becomes a racist slur. You know? People are not going to... There's no good way to say something nice. It's just like there's no good way for me... For no one to call me a nigger. I, there's no way that you can tap me on my shoulder and no, in no way that you can say that word that would make me feel comfortable, you know? So, as much as that doesn't make a, a lot of people feel comfortable or a white person saying the word nigger or this or that, then people need to dumb down and keep their, keep their opinions and their thoughts to themselves when it comes to homosexuality and it comes to us and who we love and how we love and how we are because no one is on this earth to be the same. And you have to understand that if you make someone feel uncomfortable, then it's something that you're rocking within them. They have an insecurity about them because people that are comfortable with themselves and people that know themselves do not get bothered by things that have no relevance to them. They don't care. It is what it is. Do you know how much people at work, right, how much straight black African church going God fearing men I talk to on the level about everything and they don't even budge they're asking more questions they even tell me you need to tell me to go to club well, we need to go in this girl these are the, and you I, it's so bizarre to me because it's still a word that it's still a world that I'm not really I still find it really 
awkward sometimes but it's still there are there are good men out there that understand and these are people because they're comfortable within their selves and up until that point i only met white people like that that are comfortable that can happily kiss a, a man on a, and a lads out on a night out and and it's nothing like but for black if two black men were to judge suddenly instantly it's like black men have this stigma it's so easy just to oh no homo or no homo or this or why are you acting like that or, stop acting like a batty man or stop doing this or stop doing this like stop acting like a girl stop doing this stop doing this you know what i'm not gonna lie i'm a man and i have feminine attributes i did come from a fanny and i was I was I was harvested and made. We were all made in a woman's womb. So if you don't have feminine attributes and people make you feel bad for having feminine attributes, then I feel like there's definitely something wrong upstairs considering that you was developed inside a woman for fucking nine months. How do you expect not to have some sort of feminine attribute? Of course you're going to have it. Of course I was made inside a woman. Mm. So if there's some things that I'm more compassionate about, if there's some ways that I handle myself, if, there, if there's ways that I do things that to you is not manly, then sorry. <laughs> because there's so, certainly stuff, there's men that want to act like gangsters, that have a pinky finger, that have long ass nails on one finger, that do certain things, that like to be mothered, that like to be cooked for. All that stuff is very feminine. So just because you're seeing mine in a more physical sense, it doesn't mean that you, it, 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 it makes you any more masculine trying to hide yours. Because yours are, are very out there. That's the thing, a lot of men want to be mothered. And what is that? What is that? Hmm? Want to be close to home? Idiot. Talent, man. People like judging so flipping much when there's no relevance to their judging. And when especially doesn't have anything to do with them. I can talk on issues in my community because I'm a part of it. You can't because you're not. And you never got to know that. And all you want to do is bash and throw, and throw around slurs and things that are just unnecessary. Like I would still never understand like... I adore my Caribbean side. I embrace other countries more so than Barbados, to be honest. Especially Jamaica. When I'm in a club, bashment, dance hall, oh my God, the first thing I want to hear, that's the first thing that will get me going anywhere in this world. Let me hear a bashment or dance hall song play and I'm gone. That's me for the night. I am fan I'm complete. I'm complete. And so to think that half of those songs are so homophobic, it's unbelievable. And I don't understand how people wouldn't look and how these people don't have friends and they're singing a whole song about batty men and the friends don't pick up on it and they don't think that it's wrong. Why would you sing a whole song about, you know, what, because it's trending, it's something that you really believe, because it's so disgusting. There's a lot of things, you never hear these people sing songs about rapists or paedophiles or anything like that. They always have to sing about batting. Every song, there's a song, now batting man pond that, and and it's so unnecessary. Then you've got Nigeria, and then you've got so many countries where being gay is banned or if you're caught then you know you could be stoned to death and it's all unnecessary like why is there so much emphasis on love because at the end of the day, that's what it is it's love so i have no understanding why people and they and such cruel you're so cruel and so disgusting and then half of these people have the audacity in life to then put god's name into it and while you're being disgusting and despicable, you're still going to put God's name into your own abuse to justify your wrongdoing. Because it's your wrongdoing. I'm loving here. I'm living life. I'm loving. Who I love is none of your business. Just like who you love is none of your business. It's not my business who you love. Neither is mine. This is who I am. And then the whole thing where it's a choice. An element of it. Yes, it is cho it's a choice. I choose to be myself. Of course, I'm choosing to live myself and to be who I want and choosing to be the junior that I am made to be, okay? I'm choosing. I'm living in my truth. I'm choosing to live in my truth. I'm choosing to be authentic. I'm choosing to be genuine to myself and to be and doing what makes me happy. Yes. But was I made like this? Have I always been gay? Yes, I have. 
I don't think anyone is born with a gender. I think you come out attracted to what you attract or you're developed and molded by society and being a product of your environment until you really get in tune with yourself. That's how you know what you like. In school, no one knows about physical attraction. No one knows about the emotional connection and chemistry. No one thinks about that. You just go out with whoever was hot. That's how I was in school. That's how I went out with so many people. Cause he, and it, people, it was so easy. Girl. I wish an element of that t was in the adulthood. If someone liked you and found you attractive, would you go out with me? Yes. Oh my God. Now people want to go long, around the roundabout. That's that. So when people were like, oh my God, you was, you was straight. It's not I was. How, what, what attraction do you know when you're, when you're that young? What do you really know? You don't know nothing. Okay. I can't say you can't justify not knowing love. Because they, people want to call it puppy love. But when you've got a connection with someone, yes, there is a connection. I don't know if it's, you don't really know if it's true love until you've, that's when you need years to develop with someone. So if I now was with someone since I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to now, then yes, my God, true love from the start. I can't, you can't tell someone when they're going to be in love with someone or not. But at those ages, you can't really tell if something's real or not and it, unless it stands the test of time or you reconnect when you're adults and you end up together that's different but it's not like oh i was straight yes i have been out girls but how much attraction do you know of you're young you don't know about what you're meant to be knowing do you know what i mean did i have a strong urge to be a woman did i imagine myself married a woman i never imagined that because i don't think i needed to but i know i always managed i always wanted a man always but it's it's a, it's it's like the fear of the unknown. It's a taboo. It's it's, it's something that definitely I it's like I never saw it, and because I never saw it and I was never brought up around it, it was definitely wrong, you know. And I I I, I never saw it. I never heard of it. I told you I did not know what gay was. I never I never heard of it. I didn't know what it was, and I never saw it. But I feel like this one. I like this. I like an element of this generation now because there's more people coming out more younger and even though there's a lot of people being killed and oh, tragedies all over but it's it's not it's it's a thing where now i feel like people are not scared to be themselves anymore and because they see more people like them it's it's opening up doors for more people to stand up against what people wouldn't necessarily socially accept and it's now becoming acceptable in a way because more people are being exposed and open to it that's why it's, it's really important for people to come out and that's what i said like if people that were homophobic just took a back seat okay you had you 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 don't like this you don't like that but it's still none of your business and and not said anything there were people who were so ignorant and biased weren't so ignorant and biased to certain situations they can teach their kids you know what this uh, i mean for me myself personally i wouldn't really i would hope for that you'd end up with you know the opposite sex but you know this is what happens in the world their love is love there are men with men there are women with women you know let's not talk anymore about it that's just that so don't be so don't be shocked or surprised you know if people are just a bit more a bit more i want to say open because that will never be a I don't want to say that, but if they were just a, just took a deep breath and just allow, let life, let life be, you know, then I just think this world, a percentage of it would just be so much more of a better an open place, you know, and there would never be no development forward in anything that we're fighting for, unless people learned to just fucking give some things a rest stop poking your nose and putting too much thought in things that aren't your business because it's so it, those people that like shouting the most all it takes is for you to throw one stone right they could have a whole tower block throw a stone at that tower block and, and, and you attack them in one thing one area those people will go off like nothing else so if you know that you don't like it why are you going off about things that aren't your concern I, I, I've, I still to this day I was still never, I never understand how me being gay is uh, my, anyone's concern and then you have stupid women oh my god he's so cute what a waste what a waste of my oh my god the amount of times I've heard what a waste of sperm I am what a waste of this then what a waste of beauty you are because um, there's still a whole lot of people that you're openly opening up your legs to and you don't you're not even giving a second thought to it there's so much people that are proud to have sugar daddies and sugar mummies and, and doing this just to get a 
just to just to get the latest trend, just to get the latest fashion. Sleeping here, spreading it open, spreading it wide all day long, and you have the audacity to say, I'm a waste. Then what are you? Look how you value yourself and then look what a true waste is. Nonsense. My God. These people, even if I happen to be straight, right? Do you know how much time I got turned down? Even though when I was when I was supposedly straight anyway. Oh, so now, now I'm a waste. Oh, regardless, whatever you are, there's always going, you're not going to be everyone's type anyway. So it's easy for people to throw stuff out there because they, a lot of those people wouldn't even be looking at you in the first place, even if you were to move to them. If you haven't got this, 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 or etc. With the way this world's materialistic and fucking shallow. So it's so irritating when people say stuff like that. Because if you was to step to them, basic and standard. Like just trying to be yourself. These, a lot of these people wouldn't even give you the time of the day. But they want to be writing on profile when they know that, you're, that you have no attraction to them. And suddenly you're a waste. But I'm a waste because I'm not all over you. Please, get it together honestly. Your head and your whole life is a waste. Nonsense. Imagine, very offensive that is, you know, what a waste. You're a waste of sperm. You're a waste of sperm for even saying that. Shows how much you value yourself and your life to be that bothered to even say something like that to someone. I never killed anyone. Jesus Christ, I'm not on death row telling me I'm a waste of sperm. I can still happily have kids. I don't even need to want, even if I was straight, I can have a child. I don't need, I don't, this is what is so annoying when people talk about, um, reproductive and you need to be this you need to be this listen if i was a straight man right now right and i decide to have a child i can have a child it doesn't necessarily i don't need it doesn't even need to be a it, 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 there's certain things in life where it doesn't matter what sexuality you are it, you can still happily do it especially in this time this this is 2018 there's not much that you can't do on your own think about that before you want to start putting stuff together, before you start wanting to put this and this together and coming up with 83. Nonsense. We are only one plus one and you come up with 83. Nonsense. Oh, some people are very irritating. But that's just what I wanted to talk about today. Because it's just, it's just annoying how people don't understand how they can be the ones to tarnish a lot of the beauty out of things, you know. Definitely can, we can definitely be our own worst enemies, honestly. Like, even down to me being negative about the snow yesterday. This is beautiful. I should be grateful there is snow because when it's too hot, I'll be complaining that it's too hot, you know. Like, why don't you just, there's so much things, like, I try to be positive, but there's so much things that I take for granted. Like, you should just be enjoying it. Like, just go outside, have a laugh, you know. It's actually the one time where everyone's smiling. It's just that's how everyone, everyone always has some sort of attitude or an angst about something. And it's just unnecessary, you know. It's just unnecessary. But I need to go and cook now because I need to take some lunch to work because yesterday I was not happy with myself. I actually bought lunch and I was like, ugh. Mm. I'm fucking slacked. I haven't had my gallon of water today. But I drink enough water, so I'm already good. I could be drinking more, though. And I didn't have my tea when I come in this morning. I was so tired. So I'm trying to make up for it now. But um, I need to edit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. And keep safe. Keep warm, man. Because, oh, fucking hell. It is a bit chilly willy outside.